Hi, welcome to the Gendan Automated Products uh, Durometric demonstration. So we're going to have a look at Durometric plugged into a Porsche 911 today. So we've got a 911-997 model. And if we select that, we then you choose the engine. It's a 2009 newer engine and it's got the PDK transmission. So if we click on OK. So now it comes up with the menu and we can choose which system we want to connect to. So if we first look at the engine management, now we click on the information tab. It should bring up where you can see the over revs and any sort of limiters it's hit. So we now look at fault codes for the engine. We've got a couple of fault codes there. Actual values. Now this is where you can see all the live data for the different uh, systems uh, when the engine's running. So I'll just show you there's a whole big list of parameters here. So if we scroll down, it's quite a big list we're offered for the engine. As you can see, it goes a long way down. Now, not all these values will be offered by the engine, but these are all the possible supported values. And there's still more. And finally, that's the bottom. So now we can have a look at uh, so some activations that you can perform. And now we've got an options tab as well, just to change some of the settings. So if we move back now and we can click on the activations tab, oh, so that's the next one down, activations. There we go. So these show you the activations, so you can actually run these tests to make sure everything's working as it should be. And here we've got basic settings. So if you need to calibrate or configure something within the engine, you can do it within here. So now if we move on to the, uh, the PDK transmission, again we've got information there with some part numbers, a bit more information about the system, and we've got some fault codes. We've got a fault code there. It's just a communications fault, so hopefully I'll be able to clear that one, it'll go away. But let's move now on to the stability management. Again, some part numbers. And now look at fault codes. There we go, no fault codes in the system. And we've got actual values here as well, so the live data parameters. To see which ones we've got. There we go, not quite as many as the engine, but it's a good list there. To look at. So now if we click on tire pressure monitoring, right, okay, yeah, we don't have that fitted to this one. So I'll move now on to the instrument cluster. Look at the information on this one. You've got more part codes. Have a look at fault codes. Yeah, we've got one fault code there. And now we've got the, the live data values again. So now we can have a look at uh, input signals. We've got one in there. Then we've got the activations again. So these are the things that we could run and start and stop. We've also got coding. So we have lots of warnings on coding because we don't want to be stopping modules from working on the car. So you have to go through lots of agreements before it uh, will let you do coding. And it's good you've got an option to back up and restore coding if you get it wrong. But these are all the options with the professional Durometric package that you could change within the instrument cluster. So it allows you to do some retrofitting and some tweaking of uh, what functions the car is performing and what systems are on the car. It's a good long list. So definitely worth backing up your coding, your current coding, before you make any changes. Have a look back to the top of the list. Got all sorts of things that we could tweak in there. Telephones, there you go, tire pressure ones are not installed. Now let's have a look what we've we got next. So we're into electrical system. Again, we've got some information, some part numbers, some fault codes, and actual values, not many there.
but it's good to see some live data. We've got a good list of activations on this system. Right, let's move down and have a look now at the airbag. We've got fault codes. Uh, we've got a couple of fault codes in there. Got any actual values now for airbag? Let's have a look. Yep, got a list of actual values there, the live data parameters. Got some actuations as well. So there's got an explanation mark, so we have to read up before we start clicking on those. Okay, so what system have we got next? So seat weight. I'm not sure if we got this. Oh no, that's not fitted. Okay, let's leave that one. Move on to the next. Steering. Yep, yeah, there we go. So we've got some fault, some Porsche part numbers there. Coding. Oh, I got a warning there that Geometric don't have the coding. Um, some information for this module. So we'll just see if it does offer anything. No, I guess that's coming in the next update. So let's move on. We've got now what's next? Air conditioning, fault codes. Right, okay, so there's no codes showing there. Activations, there we go. Look, we've got a few activations for the air conditioning system. And we've got some coding offered in there. Let's see what we've got. There we go. Just some information to tie the aircon to the car. Now we've got now uh, let's have a look at the CAN gateway. So we've got quite a few fault codes in there, but the CAN gateway talks to every system around the car, so it's picked up a few and here you've got coding. So in here, CAN gateway, the coding is where you can add in new modules when you fit them, such as the TPMS systems. You have to go and tell the CAN gateway you've got that system installed. And then the car will let you talk to it. So there's a good list in there. Let's move on to the alarm. No, no fault codes in the alarm, that's good. Got some oh, got one live data parameter there. Let's have a look now at the front electrical system. No, there's no fault codes there, which is good. Got some live data values. And we've got a good range of actuations in there. There's quite a lot that you can play with in that one. And there's some coding in here too. Let's see what coding options we've got. There we go. So got a good few interesting codings there we can have a look at. Right, now let's look at the rear electrical module fault codes. Got a couple of codes, actual values, and then we've got another good list of actuations as well for the, for the rear body module. And we've got some coding in there as well. Oh, good coding list for this one. There's quite a lot in there. Now let's have a look at the left door module fault codes. Now I've got one fault code there. I haven't noticed anything wrong. There's some actual values, some live data, and some activations we've got in the door module as well. And some coding options. See what coding we've got. There we go. We've got some coding there that we can play with. Now let's look at the right door module. Nope, no fault codes that side. Again, some live data, some actual values. Let's see what we've got activations. Yeah, got some activations there. And again, we've got coding in this door as well. Right, so what else have we got on here now? Uh, so look at the Park Assist system, the fault codes. Uh, no fault codes there. 
and I don't think we've got seat memory or chronometer fitted to this one. So now we can go up and we can actually run a full car fault code scan. So I'll test all the modules. So rather than having to go into each module individually, you can just run this and the Durometric software will go around the whole car, give you a list of all fault codes that it's found uh, from all the different systems, which is a much easier way of, of, sort of finding your faults than having to go around all the individual systems. So it's getting there now, not too long. Okay, and here's our list. So we can now see all the systems that the Durometric software was able to talk to, along with all the fault codes that's picked up from each system. So there's all the fault codes that we saw individually. We'll need to go back and reset those, but I'm just going to save this report now just so I can keep these fault codes for a record. Okay, now one final thing I wanted to show before the end of this video is the live data. So when you actually click on the actual values, you can choose to graph. So I've just quickly showing you the engine RPM here. So you can see it varying now as we press the accelerator. So you can actually graph your live data values to make fault finding a lot easier. Okay, well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. For more information or to purchase Durometric, please contact us at jandan.co.uk.